Welcome to the Lee Etzler Show, a weekly wrap-up and analysis of Cherubusco High School football. And now your host, Big Daddy Don Hyatt. Hi, welcome to the Lee Etzler Show. I'm Dave Crable sitting in for Don Hyatt. Coach will be here to talk about the exciting win against Fairfield 29-23. He'll also talk about the upcoming conference championship game against Lakeland. We'll also be joined by senior Tyler Neville. So stick around. We'll be right back after this. I lost my job and I needed help with different things like prescriptions and energy assistance and stuff. So I contacted United Way. They was the first ones that I could think of. And I went to... Um, the agencies that they gave me a list of and got the assistance that I needed from them. Because I received the help from United Way, then I'm volunteering my help out to the community, giving the help that they need. Hey football fans, do you want to keep track of Cherubusco High School football games? Log on to BuscoNews.com every game day and watch up-to-the-minute pre-game, halftime, and post-game interviews with head coach Lee Etzler. Stay connected with your computer or on your cell phone. BuscoNews.com. When you can't make it to the game, it's the next best thing to be in there. Hey, welcome back to Lee Etzler's show. Uh, coach, great win over uh, Fairfield 29-23. Pretty exciting for the fans. Yeah, it's always it's a it's a game uh, we look forward to every year, and we know they look forward to the game every year. Uh, interesting because it seems like uh, seems like every year the game turns out that that way. It's crazy, uh, uh, lots of momentum shifts uh, back and forth, uh, and we you know we were fortunate enough to pull it out. So uh, you know we've had quite a few close games through the years, and it seems like they've got us on a couple of the close games. So. You know, like we told the kids, uh, we figure it's our time to win one of those. Uh, Fairfield was ahead 14-7 at halftime. Um, and then towards the end, it was back and forth, back and forth. Like you said, a, t a ton of scoring there in that second half. Yeah, uh, you know, they they played us real hard uh, like we figured they would. And, and you know, our kids played hard pretty too, pretty hard too. Uh, and you just made a few mistakes that, that, that gave them some scoring opportunities that were not real – real happy about but you know offense continued to move the ball uh uh you know outside of a couple of mistakes that, that that we felt kept them in the game uh you know pretty good football game uh kind of plagued by those uh offensive offensive line penalties i guess were the false starts and that type of thing yeah i had a had a few of those and you know a lot of it's uh excitement kids are you know like i said looking forward to playing the game probably a little too amped up to play in the game and uh you know, made, made a couple, uh, made a couple penalties, uh, you know, probably because of it. So, you know, those things put us in a, in a bad situation. And one of these days, hopefully we'll figure those out. Do you, so you just think it's, they're just too amped up to just amped up for the excitement. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't do those types of things in practice. Uh, we, we've actually done a pretty good job, uh, you know, tightening those types of things down in practice. So, uh, you know, whatever reason they happen in the game, and, and probably a lot of it was the excitement, and, uh, you know, we need to get those figured out. Big game in the rain, Lee. Uh, Jason Nicodemus ended the game with 300 yards rushing, just a, just another tremendous effort from the from the senior. Yeah, very, you know, and, and especially uh, sat at least uh, parts of a couple practices out last week because, uh, you know, hampered by a little, by a few injuries, but uh, played real well. You know, gave him the ball 36 times, which which ties for a, a school record and 300 yards rushing, which is second all time uh, in in school history. So, uh, very good game. Uh, you know, he's definitely a difficult guy to tackle, uh, and, and they found that out last night. So, uh, played real hard, and, and conditioning was pretty good because we didn't get him off the field very much. 
Uh, Conwell stood out as well. He had close to, I think he said, close to 100 yards as well. Yeah, uh, did a good job blocking too. Uh, busted out, I don't know, 60, 65 yard run or so. And, uh, you know, he's got the speed to do that. And, uh, you know, we did give Jason the ball 36 times, but every once in a while we'll give it to somebody else. So it was good to see some good things happen, uh, you know, with him. So, but he did, he did a much better job blocking than, and probably his best blocking in the year. So, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good game by him. Um, as as we keep going through the through the game, uh, the second half there was it was back and forth, and they had us down. To, well, we might as well talk about that kind of end. But we had them. They had us down there to. We had to punt the ball towards I don't know two two minutes thirty five seconds ago I guess in the game, and they got us four and out, and they blocked the punt. Can't go over that sequence. What, well, how do you feel about that? <laughs> what was going through your mind? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, not a great situation. Uh, you know those types of things you don't want to you don't want to have to deal with in extremely uh, distressful situation. But at the same time, you need to you need to get over it pretty quickly, and you need to do what you can to to stay in the football game. Not only the coaching staff but the kids. So uh, you know you can't get too worked up, even though it's an extremely frustrating situation. But you get too worked up, and you know that starts rub, rubbing off on the kids and. And then all of a sudden, you know, they perceive our chances uh, there after that to be uh, futile. So, uh, you know, not not a good situation to happen, but uh, glad our kids responded well after that. Well, yeah, as soon as they kicked the ball off, here comes Corey Miller right down the, in, front of the, in front of the bench all the way down. What are you in on the 20-yard, 15-yard line there? Yeah, he was inside the 20, uh, so that was a nice surprise. He had one uh, pretty decent uh, kickoff return before that, but they also – Pinned us inside the inside the ten on a couple. Their their kicker is a, is very talented. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know Corey did a good job. We had a couple blocks in front of him, and uh, man, what a you know that helped us out quite a bit. That was it was it was pretty awesome. And then then well Conwell I guess Conwell went around the left hand side and punched it in there. With, I think I looked the clock said six point three seconds to go. Yeah, the we well first play we gave to Jason. Uh, he got a first down and put it inside I think the five yard line and okay. we uh, which you know in that situation you're a little bit glad that he didn't score right away because who knows what they're gonna do when they get the ball and right. you know had the opportunity to run some time off the clock. Uh, second down just another yard we gained and then uh, and then fumbled the snap. Well fumbled the snap on second down and Bob gave the ball away so uh, so now we're all of a sudden outside the five on third third and about goal on the on the seven yard line so you know started to get a little bit worried there again but uh, you know gave the ball to Conwell um, Harris uh, had a great block on the cornerback uh, Conwell did a pretty good job of sticking his nose in there so you know, six seconds to go, a little bit planned that way. I mean, you want as much time. We had a timeout left, so uh, we had enough time to run to run as many plays as we had down. So uh, we weren't in a big hurry to, to score. So, uh, but I did get a little bit worried on third down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fairfield's always dangerous. They can come right back and score, you know. Yeah, I, you especially, know. you know, good kicker and, you know, who knows. I mean, that kid can kick 50-yard field goals, so... Uh, and they have receivers they can throw the ball to, and they they proved that uh, they're in the first half. So uh, yeah, we don't we don't like a whole lot of time on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Least can you stick around? We're gonna come back a little bit and talk about some defense and uh, talk about uh, Tyler Neville's gonna be our guest and maybe give him give him a few words about Certainly. him. Okay, everybody stick around. We'll be right back after this. Talk to coach about the uh, uh, exciting win at Fairfield. Uh, gonna talk about defense and talk to little, talk to us or Leo to give us a little pointers about Tyler Neville who'll be coming up here soon. So stick around. I lost my job and I needed help with different things like prescriptions and energy assistance and stuff. So I contacted United Way. They was the first ones that I could think of, and I went to um, the agencies that they gave me a list of and got the assistance that I needed. From them because I received the help from United Way then I'm volunteering my help out to the community giving the help that they need. Hey football fans do you want to keep track of Cherubusco High School football games? Log on to BuscoNews.com every game day and watch up to the minute pregame halftime and postgame interviews with head coach Lee Etzler. Stay connected with your computer or on your cell phone. BuscoNews.com. When you can't make it to the game, it's the next best thing to being there. 
Hi, welcome back to Lee Etzer Show. We're here talking with Coach about the defensive part of that Fairfield game. You, uh, Kuznar and Hicks, defensive tackles, played pretty well, you said, Lee. Yeah, they, they played well and, uh, you know, probably took them out of some of what they like to do on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, they're big physical kids. Uh, they can pursue the football pretty well and, uh, you know, not the, not the type of game where, you know, since a lot of what they do, throwing the ball downfield, running the ball in the flank, uh, you know, not a big statistical game for a, a defensive uh, lineman, uh, but, uh, you know, they you know, think they, they took them out of some of the stuff they want to do and made them a little more uh, one-dimensional offensively because, uh, you know, they were doing a pretty good job plugging things up. Uh, one dimensional, you mean that it, so instead of running the ball, they had to start throwing the throw ball. Throw it a little bit, mm-hmm. running, uh, putting the ball on the flank, whether it's okay. running it or throwing it, uh, you know, between the tackles was a little bit clogged up. I see. Who else stood out in your mind in that defensive side for you? Uh, again, a pretty good game uh, physically. Uh, you know, we, we start off in their first offensive series, and, uh, you know, uh, Nicodemus uh, smacks uh, their, their running back pretty hard, and, and there's a kid that that averaged uh, 10 yards of carry going into the game. So uh, hit him pretty good and pretty good physical play by him. So, uh, you know, they're, they're the good thing about, uh, you know, that game, we controlled the ball quite a bit on the offensive side of the ball. So there wasn't a lot of defensive snaps, uh, but, you know, pretty good physical game up front. Jason played pretty good physical game. Outside linebackers, uh, uh, you know, Zoom Broom and uh, Broom Ball played, played pretty well. Um, we're going to be joined by Tyler Neville. He's a couple years starter. He's been maybe started and played a lot last year. Senior, uh, tell us a little bit about Tyler Neville, if you would, Coach. Uh, he's he's done you know extremely extremely proud of him. Uh, you know he's done a whole lot, and he cares as much as anybody we have about uh, you know the success of the of the team this year and. You know, has invested a lot of time. Once, once all the benefits of the time invested in championships and things like that, and you know, turned himself into a, a very good football player. Uh, you know, starts at uh, tackle on the offensive side of the ball, rotates in at defensive tackle. Uh, you know, he's gotten tremendously stronger over the years, mm-hmm. and and you know, is a is a physical threat. Uh, you know, we've played we played uh, guys up front that. Uh, you know, just hard football players, you know, they might be behind a little bit physically to those of which we're playing. Well, you know, he's got a lot of heart and can do some pretty good things physically as well. So, uh, is, is, like I said, cares as much about the success and, and has shown some, some pretty good leadership ability. And, you know, he's one of the kids that will, that will speak up when things aren't going well and, and, and influence others in a, in a positive way. So. Uh, he's an easy kid to root for for those reasons. Play, plays as much hard as anybody in the team. Doesn't there's he? no doubt, yeah. Good. All right, hang with, hang with us, Lee. We'll be right back. Uh, everybody stick around. We'll be right back, and we'll be here to talk with senior Tyler Neville. I lost my job, and I needed help with different things like prescriptions and energy assistance and stuff. So I contacted United Way. They was the first ones that I could think of. And I went to... Um, the agencies that they gave me a list of and got the assistance that I needed from them. Because I received the help from United Way, then I'm volunteering my help out to the community, giving the help that they need. Hey football fans, do you want to keep track of Cherubusco High School football games? Log on to BuscoNews.com every game day and watch up-to-the-minute pre-game, halftime, and post-game interviews with head coach Lee Etzler. Stay connected with your computer or on your cell phone. BuscoNews.com. When you can't make it to the game, it's the next best thing to being there. Hey, welcome back to the Lee Etzler Show. We're here with senior lineman Tyler Neville. Tyler, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. Um, Friday night, you guys beat Fairfield 29-23, and your offensive lineman been your starting this year. Got into a lot of games last year, and you know you you played a lot as much as anyone last year. Uh, what? How, how special was that win for you Friday night against Fairfield? Well, uh, we knew it was going to be tough, and the fact that it came down to the wire, and we kept driving the ball and driving the ball, and that we finally push it in, it kind of, you know, it set in that it was up to us. Uh, we need to get the ball in the end zone. And it felt kind of nice. 
you guys did did a great job there. And uh, <clears throat> what went through your mind when they when they blocked that punt right before when they blocked that punt? I was like, oh, man, this is. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I actually got down and I was a little nervous. But then I, you know, I looked and I started walking down the sidelines, realizing you know it's up to us. We need to get the ball down the field again and. We ended up scoring right on that next drive, and I was pretty confident in our defense stopping them. They ended up getting that field goal, and I thought, well, here we go again. Same situation. We got to drive the ball down the field, and luckily we got that. Corey Miller had that great kickoff return, and we punched it in there right at the last second, so it was, it was great. Conwell went around the left-hand side, and yep. he, and that was uh, – Petrie fumbled the ball on that second down, and I thought, oh, man, what are we going to do here? But then he got a pick back. Or, and I don't know if John or Jay fumbled it, but he you know kind of fumbled the snap a little. Yeah, and then for a second I was watching on film. I didn't. I thought we called a play, and it kind of looked like QB sneak. I wasn't sure what was going on. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that kind of worried me a little bit. The clock kept kick, uh, clicking down. Where it was third and – well, I don't know, third and four maybe. And, mm-hmm. We called that jet, and we finally pushed it in there. So went right around the left yeah. hand side. So you've been a, you've been playing football, Busco, for for four years, Tyler. And uh, when I remember in your starter, you were a skinny little kid. Buddy, how much you weighing now? Uh, I'm up to about two twelve now. Which uh, <laughs> last year I, I was weighing about one seventy five playing. So it's a lot nicer having that extra fifty pounds, being able to push people around. So. So what do you attribute that? What do you attribute that 50, extra fifty pounds to weight room and that type of thing? Or well, once I actually started playing more last year, I realized is uh you know I did I did decent at weighing one seventy. I figured well I better start hitting the weight room a lot harder than what I have, and I realized what I was doing wasn't good enough, and I started eating a lot more, and so that's how I put that extra weight on. Just put extra weight on and start yeah. go, hitting the weight room, and and do you run track as well? Yeah, I throw in track. Oh, you do? And okay. Then I wrestled last year, so. Good, very good. Um. Tyler, coach, coach says you you play with as much intensity on the team, and you want to win as much as anybody on the team. And he also said you you play with his, uh, uh, a a lot of heart, as much as as hard as anybody. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what Busco football means to you. Well, when I was growing up, I always went to the away and home games. Uh, ever since middle school, I think uh, I was in seventh grade when we watched. I went uh, with Jason Nicodemus to the Sheridan game, which was semi state year, and I just thought, wow, you know, I I want to get there. And, I looked at how much hard work those kids put into it, and I realized that I'm going to have to do the same thing if I want to help my team get as far into the playoffs as we can. And our ultimate goal is a state championship, so hard work, and I just love the game of football, and that's pretty much where it comes from. So how do you, how do you like playing for the coaches and coaching staff? Did they help you get where you're at? Oh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of the work. I know what, we put a lot of work into it, but uh, without the motivation from the coaches and the like the boundaries as far as the weight room and what we need to do, and they they do a fantastic job at getting us set up what we need to do. So, what uh, what what got any plans after high school, Tyler? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I I know I want to go to college, but I'm not sure yet. So, you are not sure if you're, you're going to try play some football, maybe, or you're not sure uh, yet. I don't know about that. Yeah, so, yeah. But right now, I'm just happy to play for Cherubusco Eagles, and that's about it. Got a big game this week coming up against Lakeland. How are you stacking up against them? Uh, I mean, a lot of people want to compare scores, but we're not big into that. And uh, some people look at it and say, you know, they beat Fairfield by 20 points, and that's not good for us. But we look at it as uh, we got to prepare harder, and we need to work harder, and have the best week of practice we've had all year. So, so maybe you guys are coming in as underdogs. Is that I mean, are you thinking you know, it? Yeah, I think we are. You know, they're eight and zero. We're seven and one. That's a bit of it. But uh, they're very motivated to play us. You know, uh, this is we're going on our fourth chance to get a fourth conference championship in four years, and. Three out of that four years, we beat Lake and accomplish that. So, uh, uh, you know, they're, that's what's really motivating them, and I guarantee you it's not sticking well with them. So. No, they're going to be fired up to yeah. come in here and play. All right. Well, Tyler, thanks a lot, thanks. man. I appreciate you coming thanks in. So hang on right there. And uh, everyone, stick around. We'll be right back to talk with Coach about the upcoming conference championship against Lakeland this Friday at 7. I'm senior offensive lineman Tyler Neville, and you're watching Lee after the show. I lost my job and I needed help with different things like prescriptions and energy assistance and stuff. So I contacted United Way. They was the first ones that I could think of. And I went to um, the agencies that they gave me a list of and got the assistance that I needed from them. Because I received the help from United Way, then I'm volunteering my help out to the community, giving the help that they need. Hey football fans, do you want to keep track of Cherubusco High School football games? Log on to BuscoNews.com every game day and watch up to the minute pregame, halftime and postgame interviews with head coach Lee Etzler. Stay connected with your computer or on your cell phone. BuscoNews.com. When you can't make it to the game, it's the next best thing to being there.
Hi, welcome back to the Lee Etzler Show. We want to thank Tyler Neville for taking the time and coming to talk with us. It was, it was a great interview. We appreciate it. Coach, got the conference championship coming this week to Busco. Going to play Lakeland, both of us, 7-0. and uh, How are we stacking up? Well, I, it, we've had some pretty good uh, battles with them in, in, in recent years. You know, last year, 17-10, uh, to 10, uh, very physical football game. We were fortunate to, to, to win that game last year. Uh, you know, and I think about like 2009 conference championship game at their place, uh, very physical game. We were fortunate to come out on top and, and, you know, we look at this game, you know, regardless of conference championship implications, it's always going to be an extremely physical football game. Uh, they have very tough kids over there uh, and, and hit us as hard as, as, it, as, as we get hit throughout the year. So, uh, you know they're they're going to be extremely motivated. Uh, you know for obvious reasons, but we've we've been fortunate to uh, win the last four years. So, you know we've been in that situation with Fairfield last year, so we understand how motivating that can be. Uh, and, and they're very talented, so they have the they have as much talent as as, as they've had in recent years. So, uh, should be should be an interesting game. What do they do? Lee, they run the ball. They they uh, throw the ball. What do they do? Yeah, they will. They they look a, very similar to us on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, they'll throw the ball a little bit and have a talented quarterback. Uh, you know, a lot of the same stuff. They'll run jet sweeps and hand the ball off to the fullback quite a bit, and you know, run a lot of the same plays and same formations of what we do. Uh, and this is the their second year of kind of morphing into that offense, and, and you know, so they they have a lot of experience at it now, and and, and are running things uh, pretty effectively. So they'll look very similar to us on offense. Uh, talented talent at the halfback positions, talent at the quarterback position, talent at the fullback position. Uh, throw the ball to uh, you know a couple talented kids. So. Uh, in, in physical up front, so uh, big challenge. I, I right now don't know how many points a game they're averaging, but it's a lot. Uh, so they're used to scoring a lot, and you know when you watch film on them, uh, it's pretty obvious why they score a lot of points. They're they're talented and they get after you. Big, athletic big kids. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Three A or are they four A school? They're three A. They're three A school. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, Leave. Appreciate you taking your time and coming out with us and talk to us every week. Everybody, everybody else, don't forget the conference championship comes through Busco this Friday night, 7 o'clock. It's also the uh, 50th anniversary of Busco football. Going to take a big picture uh, up on top of the press box of everybody that's been involved with football over the past 50 years. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, don't forget also the pregame, halftime, and postgame interviews with Coach Esso. That's always a lot of fun as well. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you guys every Thursday night at 730 on BuscoNews.com. I'm Dave Crable. We'll see you next time.